Good morning. On behalf of Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology, Josip Jure Strasmer University of Ostik, I would like to announce Dean of Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology, Professor Drago Jagar, to give a welcome speech. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, dear students, dear guests, let me first greet our dear guests, Professor Robert Traponia, Vice Rector of the University of Osijek and our technical co-sponsor. <laughs> Professor Mario Vražić, Vice Dean, and Professor Mislav Grgić, Ex-Dean of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing Zagreb, co-organizer of the conference. Uh, Professor Marinko Stojkov, representative of Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in Slavonski Broad, our co-organizer. Mirjana Gamos, Vice Mayor City of Osijek, which is also our co-organizer. Co I also like to greet representatives of University of Mostar and Vice Rector Professor Vlado Majstorović. Professor Maja Matijašević, Chair of the IEEE Croatia section and our main technical co-sponsor. <laughs> I'd also like to greet the representatives of this year's main industrial partner of the conference from uh, company Siemens Zagreb, Ms. Ivana Ilić and Dalibor Marković. I also wish to greet representatives of the other higher education institutions from Croatia and abroad, deans and vice deans, representatives of all sponsors and donors of the conference, representatives of our partner institutions from economy and local community, and also other dear guests. Please greet all them uh, with an applause. It is our great pleasure to welcome you on occasion of the third international conference on smart system and technologies 2018, organized and hosted by the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology OSIEC, Josip Jure Strosov University of OSIEC. It is my pleasure, uh, special pleasure that this year our co-organizers are also Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing University of Zagreb and our Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at Slavonski Brog as well as the city of OSIEC. The conference is technically co-sponsored and supported by many international and Croatian scientific professional and other organizations, institutions and companies, especially by IEEE Region 8 and IEEE Croatia section, Ministry of Science and Education, SIGRE, Croatian Academy of Engineering and our university. I also wish to thank to all numerous uh, sponsors, donors and conference supporters, especially our main industrial partner of the conference, company Siemens from Zagreb. As we had in the last two years, this year we also have a respective number of, par of par papers that will be presented at the conference. In total, 39 accepted papers from 100 authors from 14 countries will participate in the conference program. The SST conference provides an international platform for researchers and practitioners interested in the theory and practice of smart system and technologies related to electrical engineering, communications, computer science and engineering, control system robotics, as well as interdisciplinary research and applications. This conference provides the participants opportunity to present and share their research results and exchange experience in all aspects of smart system and technologies. Beside, beside these regular sessions, we have also three very respective keynote lectures given by Professor Thomas Pock, Graz University of Technology, Professor Davor Pavuna, Ecole Polytechnic Federal de Lausanne, and Professor Edgar Weipel, Research Director of SBA Research and Docent at the University, uh, Technical University of Vienna. Furthermore, we will have technical lecture given by Mr. Marco Bundic from Siemens Zagreb, as well as an interesting roundtable smart energy in rural areas, which will be held on Friday. This year, we have also organized and collocated the second cybersecurity conference with respective number of partners, very interesting keynote lectures, 
round table and many interesting presentations at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology. Besides, in coordination with our partners from other Croatian universities, we have organized this year PhD forum which brings together PhD candidates and young researchers presenting and discussing their novel research results. And finally, I wish to thank all members of different committees, reviewers and numerous volunteers. Without their support, this conference will not be successful. In addition to the technical program of the conference, we hope we will, you will enjoy the rich social program that we have organized during the st your stay in Osijek, the head of Eastern Croatia. It is our wish that this conference provides you a platform for scientific development, but also beautiful memories from Osijek and Croatia. I wish you all fruitful and, and interesting conference and pleasant stay in Osijek and Croatia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I would like to announce and invite uh, Vice Rector of the Josip Juraj Strasno University, uh, Professor Robert Raponja, and our technical co sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Professor Jagar, dear participants of the conference, it's my great pleasure to greet uh, you all on behalf of the Rector, uh, Professor Vladogur Berec, on behalf of uh, University of Osijek and on my own. I'm sure that you share my opinion that the results of this conference represent a significant contribution of development of research activities, not only for the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, uh, Computer Science and Informational Technology, but also of university as a whole. Let me remind you that the University of Osijek with 18,000 students and 17 faculties is the driving force of Eastern Croatia being the only university in Slavonia and Baranja. In this sense, further theoretical and practical development in the field of smart system technologies, information technology and energy in engineering generally contribute the overall development of a regional and national level. Also being the European middle-sized university, we support international events with the aim of further develop international collaboration. Just to mention that in this academic year of the university collaborate, our university collaborate with 50 international partner institutions and have more than uh, 300 bil bil bilateral agreements with the Erasmus Exchange program. This confirms the fact why the international meetings in the research and the science as these conferences are so important for us. So let me wish you much success and of course pleasant stay to us in Osijek. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to invite uh, Vice Major City of Osijek, Ms. Jana Gamos, our co-organizer. <clears throat> Thank you. I really feel like uh, home with you because last few days we see us each other so many times. Well, uh, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, allow me to wish you a warm welcome and a pleasant stay in the city of Osijek on behalf of our mayor, Mr. Ivan Verkic, and personally. Welcome to the city of Osijek, the center of IT community, actually the st one of the strongest in Croatia. I'm proud to say that international conference on uh, smart systems and technologies is organized and uh, hosted by our faculty of uh, electrical engineering, computer science and information technology and co-organized by the city of Osijek. I really hope, I truly hope you are going to enjoy your stay in our city and that uh, you will find some time to uh, visit and to see its beautiful sights and of course try some of our specialties. Thank you for attention. Thank you. 
I would like to invite Chair of IEEE Croatia Section, Professor Maja Matjašević. Um, dear organizers, dear conference participants, it is uh, my big pleasure to uh, greet you at the opening of the third SST 2008. Uh, as has been previously said, uh, this conference is technically co-sponsored by the IEEE Croatia section. Uh, in IEEE Croatia section we have around 700 members, out of which uh, over 160 students. Uh, I am also proud to say that the student branch uh, here at the University of Osijek and also our colleagues from the university are extremely active, have uh, received many awards and have also started uh, some global initiatives like the MedC contest, which is a, a competition in mobile applications development. Uh, so this is a very, very uh, active and uh, vibrant community, uh, technical community that we have here. Um, Regarding uh, this conference, I would like to thank the organizers for composing such an interesting program. And of course, I wish you all a very productive meeting and enjoyable stay in OSIC. Thank you. I would like to invite a Vice Dean of Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing, University of Zagreb, Professor Mario Vražić, our co-organizer. Uh, dear guests, uh, on behalf of Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing uh, from University of Zagreb, uh, uh, which is uh, co-organizer, and of course uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Croatian Academy of Engineering, I would like to uh, welcome you in this wonderful region of uh, Croatia, Slavonia, and this beautiful town, Osijek. Uh, I hope that uh, your staying here will be fruitful and that you will meet old friends and find new one and that you will come again next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next uh, uh, speaker will be representative of Mechanical Engineering Faculty in Slavonski Brog, Professor Marin Kostorko, also our co-organizer. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, on behalf of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in Slavonski Broad, and on behalf of our Dean, Professor Ivan Samarzic, also personally, I would like to welcome all representatives of our institutions, Vice Rector of Josip Jure Strossmayer University in Osijek, Dean of Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computing and Information Technologies in Osijek, Professor Drago Žagar, and everyone attending this conference. Smart Systems and Technologies Conference will inexorably present cutting-edge research in science and enhance knowledge exchange, research-related methods and information related to your particular research field. I hope the conference will be entertaining as much as educational and wish you a pleasant attendance. Thank you. And last but not least, representative of the main industrial partner of the International Conference on Smart Systems and Technologies 2018, Siemens, Ms. Ivana Ilic. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have uh, the great honor uh, that I wish you a warm welcome here on the Conference of Smart Systems and Technologies on behalf of Siemens DD in Croatia. Uh, so my function is uh, that I am the main responsible person in our organization in Croatia for the, all the industry topics. Uh, and I feel personally uh, always like at home when I visit OSIEC. And this is one of the reasons uh, why we uh, made decision to support uh, this conference. Uh, we have a very intensive cooperation <coughs> with the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in OSIEC. Uh, I would say from 2001 
Uh, and this cooperation is getting always forward. Uh, we are having always new ideas. Yesterday uh, on the conference about cybersecurity we announced we are about to open the laboratory for cybersecurity, uh, not only for educational reasons, but also uh, to strengthen the cooperation with local economy, especially the ones who have a critical infrastructure, uh, according to this new law would, which is now introduced about cybersecurity. Uh, the second reason, uh, Siemens uh, is, as you probably know, global leader in a region of uh, electrification, automatization, and digitalization. So uh, digitalization transformation is a process which is not, uh, has not started today. Uh, this is a big challenge uh, for the future. Uh, we have also many obstacles on the way, but this is the way we have to follow in the future. Uh, if we want to be successful. Uh, Siemens um, is always in every, every country is focused uh, on cooperation with local community uh, and um, of course uh, with local uh, universities because we, are, we, are, we strongly believe without them we are not able to shape our future and the future of uh, Croatian economy. Uh, so our aim is also uh, to provide some information how we see digital transformation and of course um, we want to help uh, all the companies in Croatia also in this region uh, how to develop uh, to be a part of this big game it's called digital transformation which will bring many opportunities for Croatian economy and for all companies which are dealing here it's not reserved uh, only for big companies for big players this is reserves for everybody for small and uh, small and medium companies which we have a lot in Croatia so I wish you a very pleasant stay I wish you a lot of new and inspiring informations which you can use uh, in your professional life and uh, nice to meet you This is the end of the opening ceremony. I'm thankful to all guests of honor and participants to this ceremony. Um, I will have a, a keynote speak after this um, uh, opening ceremony. And our keynote speaker is well known, Professor Davor Pavuna. Uh, he is from the <coughs> Institute of Physics. And uh, I'm sorry, my French is not good. Uh, Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne. <laughs> Swiss Institute of Technology. Yes. And the title of his talk is on quantum computing, uh, Kurzweil, Singularity, and beyond. So we will need uh, a minute or two until we set up for the... No problem. Voila. Thank you very much. And while they're setting up, I want to greet all the organizers and all of you. And tell you I'm also very grateful to Siemens. Thank you very much. Because with the words we heard at the beginning, I just was mistaken. First of all, my talk could have a different title, exactly the title of the conference. It's a smart system, and you would add the future technologies that are relevant both to the planet and also to creation, because we are here in creation. So I hope you all understand English, because my English is usually pretty fast, because I studied in England. But I'll try to be on the slower side. Moreover, it's a very easy talk, because the consequences are very deep. My talk is not going to be like the other talks here. My talk is hardly technical. It is not technical. But it's profoundly civilizational. For example, I will immediately reply to our dear Siemens representative. I'm not certain, my dear, we will survive the creation economy until we organize Siemens and all of us in this field. So my talk is dramatically, dramatically and dramatically provocative. Not because I want it, ladies and gentlemen, no. They invited me, thank you very much, Mr. Dean and former deans with whom I was dealing, deliberately. I have the information, I'm working with Americans, I'm working with Chinese, I'm working with Indians. Yes, I'm a consultant in Korea, yes, I'm also in Arabic countries, and I'm all around Europe. And I'll show you that. I'll show you the things that you will not find in the literature, or you'll find it in the last five days. And I will show you the consequence for civilization. Because when you work at the Swiss Institute of Technology, you have one great advantage. You have the perfect infrastructure. 
this toy is not mine. When you work for them, they pay you everything. You need the helicopter, they send you the helicopter, and you will see why. Because you have to be on top of the game. Why? Because you have to be better than Google, you have to be better than Siemens, you have to be better than Amazon. You have to be better than Facebook, Microsoft. You have to be top, number one. My bosses wanted to be number one, if I'm not number one, at least among the first three. And this is why I had to put my logo. There are no accidents in Switzerland. Every vineyard has a Swiss flag. God and the country. While in this place where I was a kid, here I was going to school. We are afraid to say we are Croatians. We are Croatians. What the hell? The Swiss put a flag everywhere. And quite correctly so. Well, I put Ferret. Thank you very much, Ferret. This is not the first time I'm giving a lecture here. Thanks to Ferret. Thanks to my friends. Also in Mostar and everywhere. So ladies and gentlemen, this is not an accident. Neither the talk nor what I'm saying. There's not a one word of accident. If you think I prepared a talk in one hour, no. Six months I'm working on this. And I'm top professional. Yes, you will get for your money. If it was the only talk, you would get for your money. We are here at the Geneva Lake. There is Geneva, there is Montreux. And I also am president of Tesla World Foundation. We bought the land in Sweden, in Bleak. And we have also the office and everything in Zagreb. So if you think that we are going to lick the rest of the planet, no. We want to win. Just like Croatian team was winning in Russia. With this, let me tell you immediately why I structured my talk like that. I need to show me how they go to the next slide because I don't use Hewlett Packard. I only use Apple. I never lost a file since day one. No, I don't use Apple because I like Apple. You use Bill Gates. I did. And I lost files. Now I have everything from Apple. Why you buy Honda? The best car in the world. Why? They have all the spare parts from Honda. The moment you take parts from different companies, you don't have a full coherence. The success of Apple is not because they're smarter, but they control the coherence. And you see it in my lecture. So now I have to go to the next one, and that shows you this. Everything I could tell you technically, you already have in this conference. So I'm not talking to people whom I have to teach anything. No. I'm certain that after my lecture, you all come to me and tell me that you know certain aspects of this. And I guarantee you, in your subfields, you know even better. But you know subfields, and the organizers ask me to give the overview and where is it going. And you will see it's very, very important where it is going. Because if I come to my title, Artificial Intelligence, well, you can't avoid it, I'm sorry. You will see formal definition that even I didn't realize. You have it here. There's not one person in the audience who does have one of these toys. There is not one person in the audience that doesn't already have certain amount of artificial intelligence in the infrastructure. Yes, I have two secretaries that are artificial intelligence by now, and you will have even more. But that doesn't matter that you have, the moment you have this toy, you already have artificial intelligence, you will see it. Moreover, quantum computing, that's one of my expertise, I will see it from the beginning. It's not an accident. This is really mind boggling, and I don't think there are even 20 people in the world that understand where we are and then where it's going. We'll see that. And last but not least, Kurzweil Singularity, I'll explain in great detail. To cut the long story short, that's when machines are on average more intelligent than we are. You know that. You have chess players, computers that can beat the chess player, even go. But it's an individual case. But when they all become in the infrastructure more intelligent than we are, then you have to ask what is with smart systems, what is with technologies, and why are we humans with respect to these artificial entities? We will define that in my talk, and you'll have a very clear picture. But because it's such a deep, consequential talk, I will not do technicalities. I leave it to you because everybody in the audience is even more qualified in certain areas. And I respect it. I saw it. Fantastic. You have great conference. Great title, great conference. I'm glad that I hear colleagues from the rest of Croatia, including Zagreb and so on. But look at this. 
You can't get away with a part of the universe. And you will see this topic, this lecture, even ask the most profound questions of our universe. Energy distribution, information, information. What the hell does it all mean? We can't get away from the roots. So ladies and gentlemen, your conference is no longer just dealing with, let's call it IEEE. I'm sorry to IEEE with a profound respect, and we all understand each other. But ladies and gentlemen, this is deeper. And I'll show you that. Much deeper. And you're qualified. I prove it to you. You don't have to be a physicist to understand every single word. OK, I'm just going to the end of the galaxies. You don't have to be a physicist to know we have of the order of 10 to the 23 galaxies. This is a huge number. That is 100,000 billion billion. Are you nuts? Excuse me, please hear that again. 100,000, OK. Billion, 10 to the 9. Billion, 10 to the 9. That's a number of galaxies. And every galaxy has that many stars. I mean, are you with me on the number? Estimated number of atoms. My dear Dean, about 10 to the 83. 100 billion, 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 billion. That's one atom per cubic meter, roughly. And that's what we know, and, that's, and how much we don't know. We know probably 5% if that. We are honest. Now let's come back to the planet Earth. That's where we are. On the planet Earth, we do, as a scientist, we go into the atom. I put it here. <coughs> do you realize we know roughly just about one century what the atom is? The idea exists. Hey! You'll go to Vukovar to, today and other places. The wine. We know wine, how to do wine for centuries. This thing, which is basis of every science here, we know hardly one century. Actually, the electron, we know just a little bit more than one century. We can just see it. And then if you go deeper to quarks, this is a concept hardly generation, two generations, maybe. But one thing we know, it's energy and the law. Unlike our legal friends, no cheating in our profession. Look at it. No cheating. We call it gravity. Hmm? Try it. I apologize to the organizers. Try it. I flew yesterday from Switzerland. It works. I was ever on the planet. This thing works. This thing, I don't have to tell you, this is your profession. The first thing you say to your kids in university, the speed of light is one foot per nanosecond. Okay? Which is 300,000 per second. In the circumstances we live in, right? Which is not certain, it's identical to the universe. So if I just take speed of light, which gives us all the electromagnetism and everything else, and I get gravity, put them together, that's the law. The rest is the energy. This is your dream. This is my dream. Because all this is energy. You are there. My dream, you are also the energy, just like me. No question. It's important. We'll see what artificial intelligence will think of us. Yeah, I know you think, yo, oh, Bob Pavuna can even dance, he can talk. Je parle français, oui, parliamo italiano, Gabriel Perus, qui est Deutsch and Hiroshi, yeah? You can in Deutsch. Može me i Hrvatski, kao je? Ali vi misli da me kao čovjeku. Mašine neće tako razmišljati. No, the, the, the things will talk about, they will not think about me like that. But everybody will think in the law and energy. And what is the universe in the lingo of the conference? <coughs> it's a coded energy distribution. I repeat, look at this universal expression. All of you, all, you are doing coded energy distributions at different levels, yes? Some of you do some electronic thing, some of you do even analog, some do, we'll see in the software, but you code. Here is a mathematician, here is a mathematician. You code. Energy distribution. What you see now is fundamentally energy distribution pattern, which you call human being. Thanks. Now, if you re remember that, so we define the universe as certain amount of energy distributed in different fashions, and that defines the, the galaxies, the planets, and whatever. We'll come soon to Darwin, but this is just an introduction. Why I need the rest? Because, of course, present physics will tell you you start from the Big Bang and you create the universe. It's actually totally equivalent like the church. 
of Christ. God the Father, Holy Spirit, God the Son. In physics we have, instead of God the Father, we have singularity that has all the boundary conditions. Instead of God, Holy Spirit, we have quantum field. Or if you like, the law. And instead of the sun, we have the energy. So the Holy Trinity of the Church was replaced, and we don't call it religion, but we create a new religion. Without the Trinity, we can't create Big Bang. Yes, you have great models, but you have come to, no, 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 phantom second, whatever you want to come. If you go deeper into the singularity, you can't create the universe without three entities. Why? Suppose you're just the point, singularity. It's non-existent, doesn't have any other existence. It has to explode. It has to explode how? Energy, according to the law. So you see how I simplified? Now this is very fundamental. And I'm taking totally Darwinistic Big Bang Theory. So I will create you, ladies and gentlemen, now, the universe, you included, according to the dogma of Big Bang, materialistic, Darwinistic theory. And I'll come all the way to humans through the monkeys. So all of you are corrected monkeys, myself included. <laughs> we have the Big Bang, no, no, we have to do the model, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a laughing matter. We start in the Big Bang, we have first nanoseconds, fire, supernova, we have galaxies, how many? Okay, fine, no problem. We have the stars, we have the planets, we have the prasoup. We'll come to that again. Prasoup evolves, more complexity goes further. You got pra-organism, dinosaurs, all of the stuff that you learn in the school. You buy it, no problem, I buy it as well. And then you have monkeys, and the monkeys, by some fantastic evolution or miracle, evolve into the brain, because that costs a lot of energy. The problem is not to go from monkey to something that looks like human. The problem is the brain. Because brain costs 300 calories per day extra. The problem with evolution, as far as the man is concerned, is not a genetic bit, it's the brain. Brain is so special, or if you like, your mind. So humans are special, and that, in evolutionary terms, is not that trivial. But I will not kill it. I will still stay in the darkness. So you and me, we evolve from the monkeys. Fair enough. That's where we are. Now look at the advanced monkeys. Now I have to start with one monkey I know pretty well. That's me. I apologize for that. But I have to start with that monkey that we develop. Well, with my friends, you will see in a moment, last of all, we organize a regular conference in Dubrovnik, Croatia. Why? Well, we soon realized at the turn of the millennium, it cannot be that you have mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, uh, social sciences, <laughs> politics, Zumba, Numba, profit, whatever. It's all artificial. It's all artificial. At the end of the day, I have to have money, I have to learn a certain amount of economy, I have to know how to dance with a woman, because I want to get married or have children, whatever. I have to learn how to speak languages. So life is not reductionism. So we take the conference as a full range, from basic to life sciences. All the top shots come to us. Oh, as many Nobel Prize winners as you wish. The best conference absolutely in Croatia. Of course, you don't know. Because the media are not interested. Trust me, if I were some dancing star in all these great days, I would be tomorrow in the media. Uh, the fact that I'm giving you absolutely top-notch talk, I can give it right now at Stanford. Right now, I can give you the same talk at Stanford. It's up to date. They are not interested. No, they are not interested. Look at the sabotage of the environment. Huh? We have that. And with that, when I go to American laboratories, well, that they love. Well, they love it only if the president is, so to speak, left wing. If it's Obama, they love me. If it's Trump, they hate me. Nothing to do with me. And I'm working with them, with them since 1988. Since 1988, I'm in American laboratories. They love me when it's Obama, they hate me when it's the other guy, whatever it is. Fine. But you see this thing is, you see this thing is? Well, there's one speciality that's important. Remember those atoms? One of the little secrets why I'm so popular elsewhere as well. I said already 25 years ago, I can put atoms the way I want, like you put eggs. And I said I will get the functionality of nanoscale the way I want. You say, you're crazy, you can't do that. I did it. You can't do nanoscience, nanotechnology without me. No way. No way. You have to do it exactly the way I did, and I'll tell you another talk which I did, I will, 
Why you have to do it like that? Because if you want to get artificial matter, which you will need, was in the moment, you have to do it like that. You have to get atoms the way you want to get functionality you want. It is like, excuse me, ladies, if you want to have home and you want home the way you want, you would ideally get what you want the land, you will get the house the way you want with the architect, and you will design your home or your university. Well, I'm doing that with atoms. I'm not the only one, so I copied things. That was helpful. But what was helpful is this field. And this you will have to understand, of course, this is the only technical bit that's different. My narrow speciality is superconductivity. Now we have to understand what superconductivity is. It's a macroscopic quantum phenomenon. And the importance of it is that if you have a material, if you have a wire, like this, and gentlemen, suppose I have some wire, right? A wire like that. You have wires here. These wires are mainly on copper. When you put the electricity to wire of copper, you have collision of electrons. The, the little guys that go through, they collide and they create resistance heating and losses. Half of the Siemens problems is exactly that. They lose on the energy scale just by transportation easily up to 50%. They could do even in Sahara huge solar panels, but to transform it and transfer it would cost a lot <coughs> losses. Well, superconductor, if this is a superconductor, doesn't matter which material it is, is here. Do you hear it room temperature? I'm cooling it down. In all these parts, my electrons are colliding. It's like you go to the main thing in OSIC, where there's faster people are colliding with each other and get lost. Well, the miracle is of superconductivity. You come to some temperature here. Look at this. Woof! At some point, everybody's dancing together in pairs. And the resistance is zero. Not smoke. Zero! Am I clear? This is a very fundamental point of thought. We have that in quantum physics. At some point, every, and that everybody's 10 to the 22. Which means what? 10,000 billion billion. This is nuts. Why suddenly so many quantums all behave like one quantum fluid? They can go to the walls, they have zero resistance, and so on. Well, that's my field. It's called microscopic quantum phenomena. And this is here, where you have zero resistance. Perfect state of matter, perfect state of energy. Perfect. Zero resistance. Infinite conductivity, plus all the other consequences. Well, I wrote the textbook. Hoo -hoo. Now you know what it means when you wrote the textbook in 1992. This was in 4,000 courses worldwide. So if you come to California and someone doesn't know who is Pavuna, it's either an idiot or doesn't read. It's a textbook. You know what a textbook is? You want to learn superconductivity, you have to read this book. Actually, it's the simplest, particularly for engineers. It was used. And I know how this thing works. And you will see all the consequences. Let's go step further, because we'll come to quantum computing. Uh-huh. Well, how I'm so, why I'm so arrogant? You see Tony Leggett? He's a good friend. Nobel Prize winner, a few years back. For microscopic quantum phenomena. He comes to me like two of us, we go for dinner, right? Welcome. We go for dinner and we talk. Well, I talk with Tony. Now, think of that. It's like when Messi and Modric play soccer. Does Modric know that Messi is brilliant? Yes. Does Me uh, uh, Messi know that Modric is brilliant? Yes. Does Tony Leggett know I'm brilliant? Yes. Like, but he's Nobel Prize. He's the, he's, he's the Pope in my field. Well, he's certain age, right? Now that explains it. There are many other Popes that, that are dead by now. So poor old Pavuna, the boy from Osik, is now at the top of the game. This year, I think I'm presiding five conferences in this field. Tony's active, we'll see in a moment, but not in that sense. This guy here is, by the way, director of our institute. He's a, he is a friend and pal, Laszlo Floro, Croatian-Hungarian from Subotica, who is co-organizer of the meeting in, in Cabral. Now look at that. We come to the core of our topic. So why these nasty guys are talking about all that? Because of you. Because of you have this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, has emerged from this curve. So let's go to this curve and see what does it do. It's called Moore's Law, and it's a basis of uh, basically what's called information electronics. I won't go through all the details. This curve says the following. I'll do simplification. Moore was a chemist who created Intel. And in a moment, we'll see why it was important. 
But Intel chips, as we all know, are very worldwide present. What was the secret of Brian Moore and this curve? Is the following. He was the first guy who even, as computer made, has discovered one simple thing, that if I have a silicon, clean silicon like this, totally clean silicon, as clean as possible, if I just put silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide is an insulin. So into silicon, I can dope something, put some additional elements that will conduct. And by putting an insulator with silicon dioxide, I can create functionality, which is exactly what I was talking with the girl. With that concept, we got all of this developed. And then Moore noticed something else. When he started with his, um, concretely here, with his company, he made chips. And he said that every year, his characteristic transistor becomes half smaller, half smaller. Half small, let's call more small. So we, we would call it popular miniaturization. This is very important to this field. Because we all use these things. If you, if you ignore this thing, which I'm using here, which is a laser. Laser is another functionality, which is how they control light. But if I don't talk about that, I'll talk about transistor. And Intel saying every year I make it half smaller, half smaller. And that gives me this curve. And curve goes like this, potentially like that. And the question is there a limit? Yes. The limit of the Moore's law is two nanometers. So if you have 20 angstroms, 20 atoms, why? At that point, that silicon dioxide is no longer insulated. So you cannot continue with Intel technology once when it's a small scale. Now, why is it so important? Well, you see the latest toys and the latest iPhone XS. <coughs> the characteristic size inside is seven nanometers. So we have roughly a factor of two, maybe three, maybe. What does it mean? Consequence for the conference. Silicon technology for all these toys can survive year two, three. Nah, here we, have we are at the end of this. Okay. It will not work with silicon. Yes, maybe silicon, but not silicon dioxide. The collapse of silicon technology, it's a totally universal everywhere on the planet, is silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide is not an insulator when you count just a few atoms, which is the case. So this curve collapses. Very important. We'll give that to students as well. What's next? We have to remember how it evolved. Now look at the scale. The transistor was done in Bell Labs in New York just at the end of the war. This was big. This is the original tra transistor for the Nobel Prize, which was basically a three terminal device. 45. By the way, in 1945, we had already beginnings of the computings. We'll see that in a moment. But there was transistor. What happened next? Texas Instruments did the first integrated circuit. 58. Hey, hey, hey. 13 years. Notice at that time, you still didn't understand superconductivity. By the way, it took even longer. But it doesn't matter. And then come the chip. 68. Now, you will know by now that most European Union is the dominated by the kids from 1968, they're all left-wingish and ballooning, right? That's why we have the situation we have, including Siemens. They want all these immigration guys and all the rest of it, but that's not what we really need to see in my talk. Because they will not solve the problem we have. We have the best minds we have. Why? Because Intel is in the end of this technology. In 68, Intel got it. Since then, since 1968, we have what we have. Every year, we have better computers, better phones, better everything. And this is your university. Remember when you had to start university of that kind? <laughs> we are all in that. I am in that. So please notice here. Hey! We are all hypnotists. Why am I saying that? They hypnotize us all. We are techies. You can see it particularly well in France. I'm not talking about creation, deliver. In France, in 60s, <coughs> we still have Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle said, Vive la France! You remember they had those beautiful cars, huh? Jabba. You remember the, the frog, the French cars, even too short? The French chanson? The French were good. Remember the movies? Where are the French now? The joke. What happened? <laughs> Les took to over. Before there were engineers running the country, people who knew what the hell they had. That's well reported And then, 68. Yumba Zumba, spontaneously Zumba kids took over Paris. And what do you got? All this crap called France. 
You have seen the mom. My own kids don't want to live in France. And they have French mother. They don't want to. Why? Bad woman. Where is the problem? You cannot run the society through social bullshitters. Politicians, tra la la, left wingish socialists, and all the rest. Why? Because one to know this. You need thousands of focused engineers. You don't get this, and you will see it, I'll prove it to you. You don't get this through giving bullshitty talks on television <coughs> and promising crap as they all do. Because I can and have the talent. Oh, I like you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll invite you for the party. I'll even pay for it. We have a beautiful party. It's so easy to sell this crap. But when you have to do something that works according to the law of the universe, then you need this. Brilliant engineers. It's not by accident Siemens does the job. There are people who do the job. Communism didn't fall because the left wing is ballooning. Communism fell apart because nobody was doing the job. I can be 10 times in Switzerland, but I'm professional. I'm top professional. I can give this talk without transparencies. I know what the hell I'm talking about. And this is the curve. The curve was now analyzed even further. What do we do beyond silicon? What does it mean in terms of intelligence? You will hear it, absolutely everything. You have these curves going beyond 2000. This is now in terms of intelligence. I'll, I'll define it in the moment. And moreover, you know the situation on the planet. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, we have more than 7 billion people on the planet? Are you with me? 7 billion. When I was a kid here in Austria in, in the 60s, we wanted 2 billion. 2 billion is only now Europe and America. The rest of the planet, 5 billion, is from Iran to Filipino. Five billion! But all the kids use this, and you know, all use that. Even in Croatia, 85%, you can check. On the planet, are you with me? Six billion have them. Now, excuse me, with every subfield on this conference, which I totally respect, we have a totally new situation. We have practically everybody on this thing. Actually, in Malaysia and in Africa, they didn't have a computer park, which I didn't know. I learned it from my. They didn't have computers. They, they passed through the age of, without computers. They went straight to the phones. Africa, Malaysia, straight to the phones. They never had the period with things. And they'll do that. Actually, it's even worse. When you go to Seoul, where they're totally bonkers, South Koreans, it's not just it's like this. They have two. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's a different lingo. They, 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 they all develop now even some new, I think, evolutionary feasts. They do all like that. Actually, I even see girls here in the audience with total respect to women, because I think women are superior being to men. Always that. Women can do it some of that. I, I can't. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but anyway, I have it. And this toy, and I swear, the reason why I got it, it has artificial intelligence. It tells me a lot of crazy things. Knows where I'm flying. Even, even knows what I want to buy at some period of the year. I said, no, Christmas coming. You, did you see this new guitar? Aha. Uh -huh. You see, compares, I got the, uh, during my flight with Lufthansa or no, well, Austrian, I got a report, iPhone XS versus Pixel 3, which is out, just out, versus uh, Galaxy 9 or something. I never asked for it. Excuse me in the morning. Hello, Pavuna, morning. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even programming it the way it should. But anyway, look at this now. This is me giving talk, you know where? Chengdu. You've never heard about Chengdu, have you? 14 million people. The main factory of Chengdu is 1.4 million people. 1,400,000, okay, 1,400,000 workers. What do they do? Make iPhones. All Apple churning toys are then in Chengdu. Chengdu is at the edge of Tibet. Nobody knows about it. They have only two things. Huge university, how much we said here, 18,000? Chengdu is about more than 100 to 200,000. This is Silicon Valley of China. Direct flight from Helsinki and San Francisco. When something doesn't work in Apple, the boss says, what the hell are you doing? If you're my director in China, fly there. Like that. Boom, direct. They're made there. They're not made in California. They're designed in California. Which means, my dear Dean, that we can design them here also make them there. When I give a talk there, my dean and my organizer, he put my photograph nicely. Look at that. This is me and this is the announcement for my talk. I swear. It was full. 
totally full. Not that they offered me a position. They offered a professorship to my student who was not even there. And you'll hear about that in a moment. So much about China. We think China. China is in front of us. Wake up. And here is the main definition of the day. While preparing this talk, and even giving previous talk in January at Ferry, I was wrong. And I'm publicly saying I was wrong. I used the artificial intelligence as intelligence in January. And you can define it various ways, and they exist on the internet. But I'm using now the most formal artificial intelligence that is for us here. You see, ladies and gentlemen, artificial intelligence is now defined software that writes software. But non human software writes non human software. So it's not what we do with our students. We teach our students, I know we all do, to write software. This is not artificial. artificial it's not that it's in any way artificial. The formal definition of the entity we'll discuss in the next five minutes is that that entity writes itself. Now, we have some mathematicians, so we would ask, why would somebody write it? Well, of course, we are at the origin. We are at the origin, because we write first software, right? So the initial software, which means code. Remember my code in the beginning of the universe? Remember the question, is God doing the code? Or is the law called quantum physics doing? doesn't matter whether it's God or built-in code. It's the same up till now. But now we have to decide what is artificial. And we are saying software writing software is artificial intelligence, which already implies the Darwinian universe is artificial universe, if you follow me so far. But you will see until the end. You got here. So let's again on that. Well, suspect began with this. Not that it's important, you can do it without a Bitcoin. When Bitcoin exploited last two years, you remember at some point it came to $20,000. No, nobody even knew about it. Then people heard about Bitcoin and they, they learned about something more important, which is blockchain, which we should remain. For you people, experts is even more important. We, don't have, we have more than 10,000 currencies now, beyond Bitcoin, I won't discuss them. But the essence is that from that moment onwards, Unlike you had before Bitcoin, not because the digitalization, you had a bank. And your bank knew how much money you had. So if I wanted to give 100 euro to Professor Jagger, or 100 euro to Professor Galich, fine, my bank will do the transfer for me, it will cost me something else, but they know how much money I have. So if I have 100, all oh, Professor Jagger will get it, but if I don't have 200, Professor Galich will not get it. That's how we were all built up. And brainwashed, by the way, and brainwashed. That's why you introduced the word bank heroin, because the bank's not exact. And here is my manager, Madame Tanya Kovacic, in white. She was a banker. She knows it all, and I know it all. They're constantly pinching. Have you noticed that every time you do transfer, where is this last decimal point, huh? In the bank. And I live in Switzerland. I know all in details how they pull it out from us. And it's a lot. Even from Siemens, by the way, that page. So let's continue with that. Blockchain will survive because of blockchain is a fundamental like this. Suppose that everybody in this audience sees all the time what I'm doing. So if I gave 100 euro to Professor Jagger and I gave 100 euro to Professor Galich, all right? Well, I can appoint Madame Kovacevic in this audience and kindly ask her for a small fee to control because you see everybody everywhere. It is not that she is now the banker. We know what is the money situation. Nobody else knows. No, no, no. In blockchain, everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. We do organize that somebody does a control occasionally, and that's a nicely way of doing it. But simplified version, blockchain will survive as a way of organization. Of course, now the Swiss chipped in, and they also control part of like, uh, um, Bitcoin and other things. Why? But you have to store occasionally some passwords. Cool, cool. Remember word password. On the web, you have to get somewhere in. Well, you have to have a key. Again, code. Well, the Swiss kind of said, look, we are reliable. We are in banking. We don't give them all this. But you know, we'll give you passwords. Or we'll save them. Of course, they are again <laughs> making money. No, it's just real transaction. So the Swiss already decided they are in the game. Not because they are noble. Not because they believe it in, uh, in terms of classical economy. But somebody figured out in Zurich, I know in whom, said, well, we can win in this game. 
Now, there are two other things that are very important in Bitcoin. I have to tell you. I just got a message today from Zagreb. See, to Zagreb is asking, who is behind the Bitcoin? Well, I'll tell you immediately. They all think it's American cyber service, service, uh, secret services. Maybe, because we know by now that the whole concept came out not of Japan, because there's a Japanese guy that nominally was in the order, and nobody found the Japanese guy. So there's a Japanese guy that created Bitcoin nominally. The smart guys in the last three years figured out that this started actually on the East Coast of the United States of America. So either the Japanese guy and a couple of kids were on the East Coast when this all started, or there's some fiddling with the American secret services that claim the Russians. For me, it's not important. You know what is important? That this program, which we call Blockchain for Bitcoin, in all evidence that we have, went to what's called dark web. Because today we have a big problem, ladies and gentlemen, you and me. You have it yesterday in the newspapers. I put it today on the Facebook. The inventor of World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, who is professor at MIT, is very sad. Because we have clear evidence that Google, Amazon, Facebook, and several others are definitely maneuvering, so to speak, free internet. This thing here has shown very clearly that we have so-called artificial intelligence. Because when they looked at the Bitcoin program, a couple of guys, the program is just perfect. When humans write programs, as we all know, if Irena and I dance, however good I may be or you, will certainly make mistakes in dancing or programming, even though you're bring the condition. When artificial software in intelligence writes software, it's perfect. It's like piano. If you have a computer playing, we'll see in a moment, some Chopin. It's perfect, but that's why we don't like it. Because we rather prefer Rubinstein or Horowitz. Because we like Rubinstein noise versus Horowitz noise. That we call artists. Uh -huh. Hello, women. That's why you like me or don't like me. Because in theory, if you liked every human, what's the point? Human has errors. And first time you were suspected when this thing happened. What's going on? What is going on? In Bitcoin and blockchain in this context, serious guys will enter in. And we got a very, very, very serious suspect that this so-called artificial intelligence is already taking the internet. Tim Berners is organizing an alternative web and different strategies. I won't be able to talk much in that. And that it's very sexy in these terms. Of course it is. They put you now, put 25,000 francs in Switzerland. Look, Selma is your automated investment system. It's right on the web. You get it in your phone whether you don't want it or want it. You want to book your Lufthansa flight, you suddenly get this thing. <coughs> Selma asks you, oh, well, you think that no Croatian person or any other person didn't you fall into it? They did. They did. Every day you have it. And it's totally automated. You even get the phone calls. Automated. So artificial intelligence is not there. It's already here. And they already plan e-world. And you have it on the web, independent of me. Find it in your journals. They already plan how to add blockchain, but not blockchain the way you and me would plan for our companies. Or Basically, they want the dream of Bill Gates. Business at the speed of blockchain. I repeat, business at the speed of blockchain. Meaning what? Meaning... Or much faster. Dollars in his pocket. Euros is... Jeff Bezos. Why Jeff Bezos is so rich? He has Amazon. He has the best, biggest shop on the planet. You buy anything, usually through him, Amazon goes woof. This is it. You get blockchain for business. That's the plan. Now the problem with this plan is that we even have thinking machine in our lab in the University of Lausanne, or in, uh, I call it Platinum in Lausanne. So we are studying it. And then I have the advisors. You bet. My own kids. Marco and Anna. Marco is 13. Well, I'm a physicist. They're not physicists. Marco is a manager in the field that I don't know anything about. Do you hear me? He's my own son. Yes, he gets all the toys. Yes, he speaks to his father in many languages. You know what manager is my son, Marco? Even dealing during Croatian soccer team winning? No. He's an e-sports manager. I didn't know anything about it. While we look soccer, we look at 
Croatian team, English team, whatever team you like. Barcelona, Real, Manchester. We look those guys, right? The guys that sweat. No. The biggest weakness is China. It's 200 million people, my dear. Play e-food. I'm not joking. Electronic sport has become now money laundering for the big boys. So when the big boys get 200 million, like Neymar going to Paris, you think he goes to the French bank, well, you know, French banks are very socialist, and, and, and shows them 200 million, you know, they'll cut them immediately 120 million. So he has to put that money and invest. Most of them, particularly the English, they invest in esports. My son has several soccer teams. He buys soccer team full, but not playing real game. Electronic. It's a big business. So suddenly I get the message, oh, I'm in Tunisia. What are you? I'm buying a couple of guys that are actually good in English and French. I'll transfer them to Europe. We have a tournament team. Where are you? Johannesburg. African tournament. Where are you? Know? Barcelona, European. Where are you? Know? Shanghai. Jesus. Look, age 30, I was very happy. I went to Australia. I went to a couple of game lectures already at Harvard. My son has done the whole planet. I'm a joke as compared to my son. I'm not, no, I'm not huge, but this is unbelievable. The amount of money is already exponential. You want to run seamless? These guys have much more money. What are they doing? Games. Look at this young lady. I'm 26. They're both, by the way, here at my conference in South But they all do the spying and everything else. You know what answer Anna does? She's an anthropologist. Looks at ours. Advanced monkeys, right? There's one difference. She's a digital anthropologist. She killed me in Rovin two weeks ago. She really killed me. I'm not an idiot. She said that you all, I mean even you, I'm sorry about it. You are lunatics of a privileged kind. You are the cream of the cream of the main kind. That's why the media doesn't don't give a damn about this. If you take a Gaussian curve, all of you are geniuses. I apologize to geniuses, but we all geniuses. We are. Most of them are now buying whatever ballooning through Amazon or at the local market. They're totally unconcerned about what I'm discussing here. They don't give a damn what artificial intelligence is. And then my daughter says, you know that? You're nuts. You talk about the universe, they don't give a damn what it is. My job is, she says, digital anthropologist, to figure out how they behave in contact with these toys. Because when the client comes, I know who are her clients, FIFA, have you heard of FIFA? By the way, the richest organization on the planet. Apart from Her Majesty the Queen, of course. A rugby union. BBC. All of Iceland. You think they do like we do here in Croatia, discuss how to revive Slavonia? But well, that's why I came here. Because how much we will revive Slo uh, Slavonian and Croatian agriculture? I don't know, but that takes time. These things, my dear professor and dean, they go exponentially now. And my kids told me, Anna said, Bob, in Indonesia, what's Indonesia? 250, 300 million people. Soccer is just like golf is here. It's an elite activity. And Croatia is well known because of the flag and everything else. So it's, by the way, seen for other reasons. Are you with me? We think the planet is homogeneous, it is not. And these toys bring us everywhere. But to know how to deal with these toys, even I didn't know. I learned from my own kids, and they were grateful to me, said, you, you gave us all these toys from the beginning, so we are totally <coughs> formed in all these other languages. So they can go and talk to the big boys in those terms. Totally new society they live in. In Croatia, everybody is big hacienda. I go to Tzata to buy something, everybody offers me big house, big house, big house. They don't want big houses. They live everywhere, literally. They need an iPhone, maybe a computer, some kind. They have everything in iCloud. And they dash the old smaller parts. Oh, yeah, buy us, buy us a loft in Dubrovnik nearby. You just go and we have three days to swim. You're working for Siemens. Hardly you can see, spend a whole week, even you, my dear Dean, all the time in one spot. So this is this new generation, and they tell me even more. Look at the new model of Google. It's out just yesterday day before. It has, and they say, artificial intelligence, completely built all the photographs in the latest Pixel, in the latest iPhone. 
have artificial intelligence, properly designed by artificial intelligence, the software, to optimize your photos. Read it. I don't want to do it here. So I'm not talking about something that's there. It's here. You buy it. When you buy iPhone XS, or you buy a Galaxy, or you buy this thing, it's there. And here we come to the guy. Ray Kurzweil is not a joke. That guy actually created artificial piano, so to speak. He was, uh, it's, it's sold out to Kawaii or somebody, it doesn't matter. He was already very good with electronic music. He's a very good scientist, no question. That is, by the way, a strategic director of Google right now. Ray Kurzweil wrote many books, he's a futurist and whatever. He knows all that and much more. The original curve we discussed, remember this curve we discussed Moore's Law, when things become smaller and smaller, when we go first and faster. Array formulated his curve. It's called Kurzweil curve. You don't have to worry. The first part of the curve is exactly like the, the Moore curve. Basically, you make chips smaller and you go, so to speak, more in intelligence, right? But you see, at the end, you look at the capacity of all human brains. And Kurzweil puts a line here. That's called singularity. We'll see it in the moment here. Kurzweil singularity is when human intellect, even though it's going up, so we are monkeys. Did we agree that we are Darwinistic advanced monkeys? Independently of how much it costs. So you, my dear monkeys, and I, advanced monkeys, here we are. We are here, roughly. Here we are. But these toys, which you call artificial intelligence, they go exponentially. Remember when I told you we have 10 to the 83 atoms in the universe? When artificial intelligence do their own what we call in Croatian Schmeichlein, in English, nuci, nuci, muci, muci, whatever the way of <laughs> propagation <laughs> is. Now, even we don't know how they do nuci, muci, muci, muci. We can discuss that. Uh, we don't even know. We, we suppose they don't have love. But somehow they also multiply. Ladies and gentlemen, hear the number. They multiply exponentially. Here is mathematician. My dear, exponent is 10 to the 170. Please. 10 to the 170. Japanese have tested, you have it on YouTube in the Go. You know the game Go, when you, when you put players and you have to surround them <coughs> and then you take over, right? So that's a Go game. Now listen to this. They took a quantum computer, we'll see in a moment, and they won. And the whole game is that you have the entities that become on average more intelligent than we are. So now look at that. The latest version since Bitcoin says the following. He expected originally 10, uh, 2045. By 2045, 2050. It seems that Kurzweil singularity is now projected to 2029, and if not even sooner. That's one decade. That is tomorrow for all of us. Are you nuts? Meaning, in one decade, machine intelligence, you have the Siemens, I'm sure you have the experts, I'm totally certain. They are faster, they, they, they are in front of us. Well, you will say, oh, they will not replace management. I don't know. This manager of mine helps. We drive from Zagreb to Osik. My Stefica, you know, that's the GPR girl inside. She guides me. Stefica knows all the time where's the best, and she even more. They guide in the real time. How to go exactly to Hotel Osik on time, and even change the route. What do you expect here? But then what happens? Every phone that you have, and you will have them, unless you're cheap. Well, you said, they will not control me. Well, they will not control you, but imagine if, I apologize to you, but I'm just using it for, suppose we talk, and suppose you're extremely intelligent woman that's a thousand times more intelligent than I, okay? What would you do? Every time I say something, you will tell me 10 times more. You tell me, you know, watch out, in the next slide, you have the wrong one for what you're saying now, because you, you are much more intelligent than I, so it's like having thousand assistants around you. So no, initially they will not take you over, but they'll give you so much information that it'll be difficult to run your faculty. It's like having no longer just the board of faculty, but you have 10,000 people, and they're all brilliant. So this is the problem with singularity. And then we have this girl. She's a citizen of Saudi Arabia. This is a robot girl. Sophia, everyone knows about her. They interviewed the girl. She nominally has best of human artificial intelligence. There are many of these by now. Now, do you think they'll be nice? And there are many of them? Well, this is Elon Musk. Elon Musk is this uh, naughty boy who created Tesla and goes X space and all those things. No, he's a physicist and economist. The guy knows certain things that he's funded by, among others, Jeff Bezos, by the way. He says the following It's worth reading Super Intelligent Bob Ostrom. 
We have to be super careful with artificial intelligence, potentially more dangerous than nukes, like nuclear weapons. There comes a guy who is really on the board. And we are not just biological boot leader. We hope we are not for super age. Because he says very clearly, it's the same said late Stephen Hawking. And these are not my Christians. They're just scientists. They say very clearly, I'll come in a moment, that artificial intelligence goes exponentially, may take over the planet. And wait, remember my beginning? Well, you, me, and Siemens will not say, well, to do the solar energy on the scale of Sahara, we will not kill all the people and cut half of the planet Earth. In you, artificial intelligence will. Artificial intelligence perceives you, 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 and me as 10 to the 28 atoms. For them, I'm carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, and some oxygen. Pretty useless. Actually, women are even more useless because the blood and whatever, you know. But they will use us as a material to the best of my knowledge. And I'm listening to you. I, I don't know if they have consciences. I don't know that they have, that they have uh, uh, anything spiritual. They are just mathematical algorithms. Brilliant, exponentially brilliant. And, and exponents is staggering. When I read 10 to the 170, I got bonkers. Because I know mathematics. I really know. These guys are saying the same. This is why Musk, this is why Stephen Hawking want to go to Mars. You think that anything fails on the planet Earth for them? No, but they want to go to Mars. Have you seen the movie Terminator? It's not a joke. There are people who count on that. Actually, we know for certain, even Ray Kurzweil, you know what he's doing? He's eating special tablets and everything. He's trying to survive his singularity. So the guy who understands these things, I'm talking intellectual, he's not believer in God and spiritual, maybe. But he wants to survive and survive in his brain to create from himself a hybrid entity. Well, I don't fall for California. I don't fall for Kurzweil. But it's, 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 it's fair to want, right? So we have serious problem with these guys. So you look at that. Huh? That is what I learned in a school. That I was a monkey and I'm a human. I got a phone call from a colleague of mine who is a director of the Institute of Rudyard Boschkovich in Ravine. He called me from Alexander and said, the war, did you read the latest trends? If this is true, ladies and gentlemen, then biological phase is an intermediate phase. We'll develop now artificial intelligence. They will eliminate us one way or the other. They don't need us. They are intelligent, but if they don't have emotions, they're not, they will fundamentally eliminate us. So how would look that evolutionary curve according to Big Bang, Darwin, Marx, and other materialistic bodies? Same as I said in the beginning, just humans, advanced monkeys, develop artificial intelligence to help them. But they underestimated that these non-spiritual, non-conscious entities have no choice but to do what they are made for, which means efficiently execute. What? It's a good question, what? But that definitely means that after this, the next round is without us. And read the books. You, you don't even have to agree, agree with me. I just prepared the program to talk. But this is really staggering. This is why everybody is seriously talking about Nobody, oh, sorry, the minister called. The minister minister called when they're here. I, I'm giving talks here, and I'm, I'm sure they'll probably call me now to fair answer. These are serious things for us. Smart systems? My name is Dean. These are smart systems. Where are we going with this? You can, you can triple the profit of your company. No problem. But where are we going with all that? And we are the pines. We are engineers. We do these things. Smart systems and technology are serving whom? Good question. Whom? Humans? I'm no longer certain. Because obviously some of our leading humans want to leave the planet. And I didn't tell you everything. I know much more, of course. No, I'm not panicking. My own kids told me, look, there, there are ways out. Of course there are. I offered 1,000 euro to kids last time in January. I gave a similar talk here at Ferry. I offered to all the kids 1,000 euro, which I still offer. I told, told all anybody young, 1,000 euro cash if they offer me a solution for artificial intelligence. How to win against these entities. Well, a kid came, I won't mention the name, sir. He told me, Professor Pavun, I made a program. Actually, he's somewhere in Boston, by the way. Young, young man, teenager. 
He said, in one week, that thingy learned seven languages, knew all about them. <coughs> we had to destroy it. And that's just an essay one kid. There are much more of these things. So this is very, very disconcerting, and they even have no projections that are not very good for us, if those terms just intelligence. Actually, there is one estimate that if you want to get rid of them completely, we'll have to stop electricity on the planet three days. Three days, absolutely no electricity. Why? Because you have to get all the rid of the buffer, all the electricity, all the computers. Of course, the big boys know it. But then question, could quantum computing save us? Now, I'll just be very brief on quantum computing, and I know about it. The key point about quantum computing is one billion times faster. So you have a toy, well, by the way, the toy will not be like that. This will be just a receiver. There'll be big quantum computers somewhere in California, somewhere in Zurich, somewhere elsewhere. Big one, it will be cooled down. And this big quantum computer will be just linked to our little receivers. But the key point is it's billion times faster. Now, billion times is really, and it's not thousands, so I mean it's billion. This is the key to it. I won't talk about how it works, quantum bits you can read on the web. We have in classical, which you all know, because you know, it's one or zero, or five volts and zero, whatever. This is the basic of technology. Turing, von Neumann, you, you know this element. This thing is quantum, which has all the states between zero and one, and that's why I need quantum physics. And I don't know. There are only 20 people on the planet who understand these things. As I told you, I'm in quantum computing because I'm an expert in superconductivity. And the, the easiest quantum bit is a superconductor, actually aluminum. Or if like squid, I won't go into all details. So we know now that we can do it even in silicon. It's called bit. The core is the speed. So ferret, whether you like it or not, will have it. Now the big news, really big news, not my fault again. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, five days ago, contrary to my expectation, IBM announces <coughs> Not only this D-Wave. D-Wave is a company in Canada where consultant is P uh, Leggett that I showed you earlier. But they said this. We have quantum computer that goes mainstream in five years. Look, I'm cautious with IBM. But IBM is not a joke company. You have it on their research page. Everybody go to research page IBM. Five days ago, they announced five big news for the next five years. Check it. Quantum computer mainstream. Excuse me. Quantum computing mainstream. I don't know how you read mainstream, but that means it's everywhere, right? At least for us, it's everywhere, right? Because we are engineers. It's on the IBM web page. I was preparing this talk. I couldn't believe it. Because I know IBM does. You cannot cheat to that level that the company puts it up front. They invested in the last five years, please listen to me, $38 billion. I mean, do you know figures? That's roughly the, the well, at least 60% of creation Asian product. And you know what? Every single of those companies I mentioned is putting 50 billion. Every single friend of mine, a colleague, is bought with a complete lot. Say they buy Martins from Santa Barbara, 50 million plus a lot, the whole lot bought. Max Planck, same. Check in, check in Siemens, I'm pretty certain they put already quantum computer. European Union, someone said that this, this funny guy was the junker, junker, junk, junker, junker, whatever. Even that guy and his company, <laughs> Joker, right? Joker. He said, he put, I put 50 billion. Hold on. Oh, then the minister said, Tomura, can you help us? We have to go faster. I said, hello. This is going exponentially. Poor Pavuna can run linearly, but not exponentially, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a joke. Tomorrow I can go and open lab in China. Yes, they're also putting 50 billion, 50 billion just the first round because they know Americans up front. Now listen to this. Whoever gets the first quantum computer, and I think they have it. Well, we have first, but they will be full of pressure. Still on. Every single password of every single one of us doesn't exist. And I don't mind that my passwords are gone. They can cheat on me or check whatever they want. But ladies and gentlemen, what about the military boys? huh? What about the banks? What about the flying database? What about any database? It's all transparent. Now, surprising, Mr. Dean. We can have our kids right here in OSIC. OSIC is where you are placed also in this. There's absolutely nothing in the laws of universe that stops. Ten kids in OSIC that does the quantum computer. I can't even tell you how it's done. 
and then go and get share of the game. By the way, it's not a secret. Ericsson Tesla did a research center in Zagreb even they, they wanted to have the, just a sub-center. But then Gordon and Kwachis told me, no, the kids were so brilliant, they put a research in Zagreb because kids are brilliant. And I can tell you, kids are brilliant, and many other brilliant kids are here. So in this game, we can still win. Now, you didn't plan for quantum computing in your school, I'm sure, and I'm quite right, and nor would I. I'm still skeptical of face, but look, this is not a joke. I told you latest news, check on the web. IBM research page, there are some other things on biology which I'm not discussing. Quantum computing, I expected, like Kurtz, a bit later. They announce it now. And I tell you that everybody's like this, believe me. Because a company like that cannot lie to such an extent. And the moment you have quantum computing, that's a help. So what do we do with the planet? Let's round it off, ladies and gentlemen. What do we do now? Well, I'm addressing questions to you. I have no answers. I have very good questions. I'm as honest as it gets. And I'll talk to everybody and my colleagues. We are very, very, very concerned. Not that we are, we are not frightened, us no. But let's look at the details. Artificial intelligence is with some software, right software. So who is writing a software? What does it mean? Very valid for academia, very valid for us. You're all smart systems. And I'm not touching what subsystem you're dealing with. But the moment somebody else writes your software, and it does, we always have jokes, you know, in marriage, you know, my wife controls everything. Thank you very much. But your wife is a very kind, even if she's not very kind, still acceptable on this scale. And moreover, once the artificial intelligence is able to make itself smarter than us, it would quickly surpass human intelligence, and that's called Kurzweil singularity. And that is most likely half a generation away. Excuse me, in our profession this is tomorrow. This is my contribution to this conference. To this conference we cannot continue, ladies and gentlemen, without being aware that maybe half a generation, which we all, you know, Chinese do the planning for 300 years. Nobody here can do seriously the job without planning a roughly half generation. So we all concerned about that. Okay? Moreover, because of all the things going on, there is now artificial intelligence governing board. They are now putting things down. We are very cautious about that. Mainly in America, and they also represent it through Google and all the other boys. So I'm cautious about it. We are trying with uh, Tim Berners Lee to do the different body, to have an independent body of noble scientists and humans to bypass all the maneuvering, because this is a very, very dangerous game. And as you see, we lost the internet to whatever business is interesting. Internet is not, I, I was an internet from day one, so I know all about it. But the internet is no longer ours. The internet is definitely not what we originally wanted. What will happen with the blockchain, we'll see. Santa Fe Institute of Complex is a very important institute in, in Santa Fe. That's where our president, Colinda, used to go to the secondary school. This is below Los Alamos National Laboratory. There are many Nobel Prize winners, smart guys. They do things like we do in complexity. They analyze these things. I can't talk about that. But they're very serious people working on these problems. So it's not just kind of, I'm talking about a talk. Quantum computing is here around the corner. I don't believe IBM could be in five years. Because I know the technology and all that. It will take a bit longer. But even if they have the first one in five years, that will change the paradigm. Why? The only thing to retain is it's a billion times faster. Not thousand, not million, billion, or even more. And I can tell you privately, the newspapers and journalists ask me, do I have something even new that nobody knows? Yes, I have. I'm telling you totally exclusively, nobody even heard about it. The quantum computing in which we have now is not the latest version. It's based on what you know, Turing or von Neumann design, which is basically classical design, with just quantum units, units. We now have quantum quantum computer, which is a quantum, so to speak, correlate, which is in beyond that. Just like, remember my superconductivity? It's mind-blowing. Now, can you imagine the speed of that? So it seems we will have to use the latest, latest knowledges and technologies to stop this beast. And you can think of artificial intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, as a beast that we can stop with something that we don't know the ultimate limits, because it's basically speed, and we behave like this. We have everywhere this going on. The mankind, this is mankind. Go out after this, go out. Nobody, I, I, I have, at the moment, I have maximum five people in all of Croatia to discuss this with. The whole planet, few people. And it's here. 
It's right for your conference. Nobody in the conference can go away without waking up. We really need you. Thank you very much. <laughs>